Welcome back to Next Year Investing. It's time for FOMO. Alex Coffey now joined by Marley Caden, host for the Schwab Network, of course, uh, Trading 360 as well as Market on Close. And Marley, we talked about this story on Trading 360 to open your program. Um, partnership between two of the most important names in all of business, I guess you yeah. could say, which is uh, Amazon and Alphabet, but of course, more specifically, AWS and Google Cloud. It's, it's a really interesting partnership. So they announced uh, yesterday that they are jointly, they've jointly developed this, what they're calling a multi-cloud networking service. And they say it's to meet the growing demand for reliable connectivity. This, of course, as we're continuing to report these outages, some minor, some major from AWS was one of them. CrowdStrike, we've seen some of these issues coming across. So they're saying now that this multi-cloud networking solution that they've created uses both AWS Interconnect, which is multi cloud and Google Cloud's cross-cloud interconnect. So it is a dual partnership. It introduces a new open specification for network operability, which enables the customers to then establish what they call private high-speed connectivity mm -hmm. to protect some of that so these outage issues don't happen. We don't have security concerns here as well. And it also offers high-speed connectivity between Google Cloud and AWS. So it really is an integration. Uh, they're also saying there's high levels of automation and speed. And importantly, noting that it represents what they're calling a fundamental shift in multi-cloud connectivity. And I think that that's really the headline in this story. It's not two tech giants, you know, came together to have a collaboration. I think it's that we're seeing that these are not going forward necessarily going to always be thought of independently in two separate sentences. And they can, in fact, be used together to the dual benefit of both of these tech giants who are obviously considered competitors. I think, too, and look, I might be way off base because I'm not an analyst in this space. I don't really even particularly totally understand it, to be completely transparent. But we think about all the security measures and efforts that businesses make, whether it's having backup data centers, backup power sources in the forms of generators, uh, multi-campus facilities across the, the nation to get you know uh, a little bit of protection from, let's say, um, natural disasters or weather disruptions, whatever it may be. It only makes sense to me as we move more and more things to this internet-based internet cloud, and that is seen as the future and is already here, that you have some sort of fail-safe involved, especially if you have the opportunity to, involving different providers. Certainly, and I think part of what they were saying, you know, Robert Enns, who's the general manager of cloud networking at Google, has made some comments on what they're doing here. And he said the goal is to help customers actually be able to move their data and applications between clouds. So it's exactly, exactly what you're talking about. It's a simplified operational efficiency between two major players, I think because it was identified that a lot of the customers are using both services. So why not just agree to be together, make a more efficient practice than having to do these full-scale migrations or choose one versus the other. You know, everybody can have a piece of the pie as opposed to there being two separate pies is sort of how it looks like from the outside in. And Salesforce, they're already noting, mm -hmm. is an early user of this new service. Yeah, it's like a way to plug in because these companies are already doing this because they see the need to have backups mm -hmm. and so make that seamless, that connection. I think it makes a ton of sense. And also in a, in a kind of separate way, if you're these companies, Companies, it's a way to actually expand the potential market because it makes it easier for a company who maybe has to make a tough choice to you know still do both of these because they can seamlessly connect them and this this technology is becoming more commoditized it's probably becoming cheaper to actually access so giving reasons to have two instead of just one uh, I think makes a ton of sense but Again, what makes these companies so fascinating is this isn't all that they do. I mean, we talk about Alphabet as this potentially new uh, major AI player. Amazon, of course, is that with uh, some of its Alexa stuff that it does. Um, but also Amazon's still like the world store. So I mean, it's Cyber Monday. We, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> we have to talk Cyber about Monday. Amazon. <laughs> yes. And you just for Black Friday, they, they don't release specific numbers and they haven't right. come out just quite yet. But the expectations from the analyst community just for Amazon's e-commerce from just Black Friday was between two and three billion dollars. And it was expected to break records. And that being said, 
was supposed to be what most of the experts and analysts we talked to in the retail space said what they thought would be just a so-so year, kind of a you know slightly softer, slightly okay year. It wasn't expected to be the best retail performance, despite the fact that we are seeing sales growing and we are seeing these record-breaking numbers because of what's happening with the consumer. They weren't expecting it to be a massive blowout. But I did see something that came up saying that Amazon's AI chatbot Rufus saw a surge of adoption on Black Friday, that it was its most used day ever, um, and that it resulted in a purchases of more than 100% increase overall in the use of Rufus, which is Amazon's AI chatbot. You know, I've been discounting how much this adoption was going to happen. I think I've done it on air a few times. Hey, I'm wrong sometimes. I might be wrong on how uh, AI and these chatbots are uh, augmenting the shopper's experience, how quickly people are willing to, to use these services. So I'm excited to see where that goes. We'll be talking with the Sensormatic Solutions president in my next segment. Um, we're going to be talking Black Friday trends. I know one of the early ones was maybe foot traffic was lower. Some of that could have been weather related, but sounds like Amazon uh, doing just fine. We'll see if that ultimately is uh, the case.